Uh, what do you take away from that speech and what the message is with Congress? How, how do you think it was received, especially with the new Congress coming in? Hi, Becky. Well, I think it was an excellent speech, but I think you're also right in the previous report to raise the question. We don't know where this is going. And there's a part of the Republican House that's going to simply oppose this because they want to divert resources elsewhere. They want to oppose anything that's important to President Biden. But there's another part that's going to have a fair question as the year unfolds. Is this war really winnable on the terms that President Zelensky hopes and thinks that it is? Can he really liberate all of Ukraine and drive Russia off all of his territory? A lot of military analysts in and out of government are skeptical. And so there may come a time where we have to think, is it, is it advantageous and just prudent to try to persuade President Zelensky to look for some kind of compromise, whether it's on Crimea, whether it's on the Donbass region in the east, and, of course, on the question of NATO membership, where uh, trying to bring Ukraine into the Western alliance may just be a bridge too far if you're trying to negotiate this with Russia. So I think we're going to keep providing all this weaponry. As you say, however, we're topping $100 billion, perhaps, in 2023. And if this is just producing a stalemate by the summer, hopefully a stalemate that leans in Ukraine's favor, but still potentially a stalemate, what should U.S. policy be at that time? It's a fair question for Republicans to ask. What, what's the reality? At this point, Zelensky and Putin will both say that there's no room for negotiation. What, what would it take to get one or both sides there? Well, they're both going to test their theories of victory. For Putin, it's see if the West will crack during a cold winter and with a Republican House of Representatives and with nuclear threats every so often being issued in our direction by him and his Kremlin. For the Ukrainians, you know, keep getting better weaponry keep strengthening their army, showing their resolve, and having the cause of freedom and righteousness on their side. So I think both sides are going to go into the winter and spring and see how well they can do. And then people are going to, I, I hope, take stock of whether complete victory is plausible by the time we get into the late spring and summer. And that's where I think the earliest potential window for negotiations may arise. Zelensky just said, is this enough? What we've given so far, he said no. And you did hear the feedback that got from Congress. I don't know if it was a laugh. I don't know if it was a little bit of shock from some of them. The things that he's been asking for, longer range missiles and things, are those things that we should give him? I would provide the tanks. I would help him build a maneuver force because pounding away at Russian positions with artillery is an awfully slow way to win back territory. And I don't think it's really going to, you know, get him that much. I try to do some estimates based on excellent work by the Institute for the Study of War, all their maps they're providing. And I think right now Russia holds about 17 percent of Ukraine going back to pre-2014 borders. The maximum they held in the spring was about 22, 23 percent. So for all this effort, all this fighting, Ukraine has won back you know, about 5% of its total territory and about a quarter of what Russia once held. At that pace, this is going to be a long, slow war. And so I, I think, yes, yes to tanks, but no to the long-range missiles that might be used to strike into Russia. I agree with President Biden's decision not to give Ukraine that capability and risk further escalation.